Hello and welcome to LexisNexis Risk Solutions Trust Live event in London. I'm Hannah Wallace and kindly joining me now from Immersive Wire is Tom Fisk. It's good to see you. Tom, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. And I know uh, you're a busy man today and about to go on stage for your panel session where you'll be talking about uh, the metaverse, which is, I know, um, close to your heart as a subject. Uh, and you'll be talking about, I think, what t teach us about innovation. And we'll just touch on that a little bit in a bit. Uh, but before we do, I think it'd be helpful for our audience uh, for you to tell us what the metaverse is and why we should care about it. Let's start there. Yeah, that lack of consensus of what the metaverse is, is one of those interesting areas. But and there'll be lots of people and companies who will give you differing answers. Uh, one which I've come across which has got the most consensus and one which I personally lean towards is the idea, the evolution of the internet that we're seeing today. So I firmly believe that the internet is going to become more and more immersive over time as a natural evolution of what it is and that's going to be encompassing the likes of virtual or augmented reality as well as new types of ownership as well, such as digital assets. That ties into the identity discussions which we're having today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's also why the question of identity is so important when it comes to the metaverse as well. Because if the internet itself is evolving, our consensus becomes identity becomes all more profound as well. Right, well thank you very much for setting the scene for us there. Uh, and I think at uh, the heart of a lot of discussions over the course of this event especially is the challenges uh, in this space and how they can be met. So what are, let's start with the challenges first uh, that the metaverse prevents. What about those? Yes, so the challenge of the metaverse is comes down to adoption. So we're seeing a variety of metaverse platforms come out from the woodwork and seeing differing levels of engagement and use cases. Uh, Roblox is an interesting example where not many people would call it a metaverse platform, but it is a virtual place where people like to engage and play games and socialize and mm -hmm, such like. Mm -hmm. um, same goes for Decentraland, which is a more crypto-based alternative. And we also see that with the Sandbox, which is another crypto-based variation as well. We see Horizon World, which is one which is meta has been creating. And the crux of it is there's not that many people who are playing across certain platforms consistently. Decentraland is a great example where they have it, anything between six to about 600 people playing consistently, which is obviously not as large as other social media networks or other types of events. Um, but then you can also explore the topic when it comes to events management too, because the same platform I just mentioned, the Central Land, also could have 100,000 people within one go for something called Metaverse Fashion Week. Right. So it's, it's a question of the way you look into it. So I think for me, the main challenge is um, having a platform which is desirable enough for lots of people to be in there consistently and I think building from there an infrastructure that, that works for it to be interoperable as well. Interoperability is a key one which I'm sure we'll discuss further within this interview process. Yeah, so how is digital identity technology keeping up uh, with the pace set? Yes, so it's keeping up in that it's very starting out, that's <laughs> another big problem we're having. Yeah. So. There are lots of companies building the infrastructure and kind of way in which we can have, be, have a digital identity together and connecting across multiple worlds. So with the internet nowadays, we have web pages which anyone can access via a simple link and go around the world. Yeah. And a metaverse equivalent is important for economic growth and for it to grow uh, faster. The underpinning infrastructure of that is still being discussed and debated mm -hmm. and the same goes with digital identity. Now there are companies like Gamium which is exploring this for example and they're working with key partners such as Meta in order to explore that further. Uh, but the key question you have to be exploring when it comes to this is how decentralised it's going to be, mm. um, how centralised must it be in order to protect consumers and users, um, how there should be some sort of agreement across organizations from the likes of Meta to IKEA, who is investing in the metaverse as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and be able to coordinate it together in order to grow together. And we're seeing early examples of that. The Metaverse uh, Standards Forum is a discussion point where everyone's coming together to at least discuss it. I want to see more technological innovation to really build that framework. 
Well, that leads me quite nicely into my next question. Who's responsible then? Because you've highlighted some of the challenges. Who's responsible for meeting those challenges, do you think? <laughs> the eternal debate when it comes to innovation is, uh, you know, company-led when it comes to innovation, but you have matched that with the policy side of what governments can do as well. Yeah. And I do firmly believe that governments have a key role to play when it comes to protecting users and people. I've seen so many cases of people who lose a fair amount of their assets due to fraud or to a misalignment, something which uh, traditional banks can help with, but is less so within the crypto space. Um, there are proponents who say that there should be systems that be fu should be fully decentralized, where uh, users own all of their data and be able to go from there. It's a perspective which I understand, but I disagree with, because mm. I do think there should be some level of protection for people, mm -hmm. which does mean some at least a layer of um, identity. Um, that's a perspective which the World Economic Forum has been building out with, and a perspective which I do believe we should, uh, in, in the UK anyway, be, be considering as well. So yes, there are uh, a number of subsidiary questions uh, which we won't be able to cover in this interview, and I want to summarise by looking at what does the metaverse uh, tell us then about innovation, a question you're about to answer on the panel. Yes, so when it comes to innovation, when it comes to the metaverse, we've already seen some fantastic work already. So there are people who are building these fantastic worlds and they're um, going through with it as well. One of my favorite types of jobs I've seen is within um, Horizon Worlds, there's a tour guide who gives tours within um, these virtual worlds. Wow. So, so imagine like a hitchhiker's guide to a galaxy-esque person hopping from place to place, showcasing things, which is a very human, quite lovely example of mm. that. Uh, and also very niche as well. Yeah. And we're going to be seeing more generative AI examples in relation to it as well. Uh, Meta has already been exploring ways where you use your voice in order to construct a virtual world around you, which is in very early stages, but I can envision that being a very powerful creator-led example of building virtual spaces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wonder when it comes to the innovation side, um, the identity aspect where, again, I, I keep hammering this, but it's such a critical point. There is not enough consensus of how we should be doing identity when it comes to the metaverse, yeah. and they're still being explored. Uh, if you want to follow this topic further, um, the Metaverse Standards Forum has working groups in relation to it, which people are free to um, take a look at and see what they're working on. Mm. I just encourage having the spirit of freedom with protection, the classic classic issue when it comes to technology yeah. to make sure you protect people while ensuring innovation. Uh, very much like with the internet of long ago, um, people prioritize an open web where people um, can access and go everywhere. Mm. That's something which we should be building towards the metaverse as well. well. I think we'll end it there. Interesting about that balance uh, you mentioned there. Uh, but Tom, uh, have a wonderful panel and thank you so much for sharing your insights. Thank you.